it is impossible to be saved twice. So, if the scripture says that you cannot be saved twice, if the scripture says that you cannot be, then people who get saved and then evidently can fall from grace, right? That means that they can never be saved again. That means that I don't know why anyone's going to church. Why would anyone go to church knowing that a sin would make them fall from grace and that they couldn't be saved again? Would you? What's the purpose? What would be the purpose? It is impossible to be saved twice. The Bible actually says that. It's impossible. In Hebrews 6.1, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. So here in this scripture it says, once you get saved, go on. Don't Keep getting saved and saved and saved. It says, once you get saved, go forward. So it says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance. So it says, once you get saved, you should go forward. Right? from dead works and a faith toward God. Then it talks about doctrine of baptism, of laying on of hands, and of re resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, being saved, have tasted of the heavenly gift, the Holy Spirit, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, right? Once you receive, been born again of God's Spirit, and the Spirit is sealed within you, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again, and to repent. It, didn't it say it's impossible to renew them again and to repentance? It's impossible. Seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So anyone is saying it's impossible for you to fall away and then be saved again. So everyone that teaches you can fall from grace and lose your, lose your salvation, the Bible says that you cannot be saved again. That's black and white. You cannot be saved again. Period. I wonder why the holiness People never taught that. They taught that if you sinned, you lost your salvation. You had to repent again. Get re-saved. Here, the Bible clearly says that if you've been saved, it's impossible to renew you again. If you fall from grace, that you cannot be renewed again. Ever renewed again. So is that true? Yes. It's very true. The Bible says it, right? Black and white. If you fall from grace, you cannot 
be renewed again. You cannot get saved again. I wonder why the word impossible was used. Because the scripture talking about that it would be impossible for you to fall from grace. It's impossible for you to fall from grace. Because it would be impossible to renew you again. Because Jesus only did what? What once? He only died once. He only shed his blood once. So naturally he's not going to do it again. So it's impossible to fall from grace. Because if you fell from grace, it was, then it would be impossible to renew you again. So let's take a real good look at this. Now you've got to remember that a lot of churches really need to look at this who believe you can fall from grace. Because once you're saved, you're always saved. This scripture is telling us that it is impossible to be saved twice. Jesus paid the full redemption price needed for Adam's sin and our sins of trespasses, past, present, and future. We can only be born of God's Spirit once. And nothing can take that experience away. You can only be born once of the Spirit. Just like you're only born once of the flesh. You ever heard of anybody born twice of the flesh? I've never heard of it. This is what Jesus told Nicodemus. Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? A second time. See, the key thing is, can you fall from grace of the flesh and have to be born again? Can you be born again in the flesh? No. No. Now remember that Nicodemus is asking, can he enter the womb a second time? So that's pretty what Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Once, once. Jesus' answer was, once born of flesh and once born of spirit. Nothing you do after you're born of flesh will change your DNA of your father. Can you change it? Can you be born again of somebody else? You will always be born of God. Nothing will take your birth away. Once you are born of God, you are and can only be born of the Spirit of God once. Just like you can only be born of the flesh once. So once you're saved, you cannot lose that salvation. You're born once of the Spirit. You never lose it. That's why it's impossible for you to be born again. Nothing can take away your birth of God. God being able will forever be with you. Any sin or falling away from God that happens cannot take away being born of the Spirit of God for sin will not be imputed against us. Romans 5, 13, For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. When we are born of God, God seals His Spirit within us. In Ephesians 1.13, in whom he also trusted, 
after that ye heard of the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. You are sealed with the Spirit, being born again of God's Spirit. You're sealed. That Spirit is sealed within you. You cannot lose it. This morning we talked about the incorruptible seed. It cannot be corrupted. <laughs> when Peter denied Jesus, three times, saying he was not Jesus' disciple and apostle, that he never knew Jesus. And in fact, this is what he said in Matthew 26, 74. Then he began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man to curse and to swear that he didn't know Jesus. And immediately the cock crew. Did Peter fall away at that moment? Did he fall from grace? Well, if you have a church that tells you you can lose your salvation, then evidently Peter lost his salvation. He sinned. He sinned a deadly sin. He denied Jesus Christ that he never knew him three times. And he cursed, and then he swore that he never knew Jesus. Let's read what Jesus said. Did Jesus, did Peter fall away from God? We're not saying he fell from grace. We don't. But did he fall from God? And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, oh, oh, Yes, he fell away from God. He went the wrong direction, didn't he? You know what converted means? To return from the direction you left. Did he fall away from Jesus? Yes. Did he fall from grace? No. But did he sin? Yes. Did he have to get re-saved? No. Nowhere in the Bible does it say when you sin, after you're saved, that you have to get re-saved. You repent of your sin and go on. He tells Peter, okay, I know you're going to fall away, but when you turn back around, then strengthen your brethren. I need you to, as a disciple. I need you as my apostle. I don't want you going anywhere you're mine. Converted means to come back after turning away. Yes, Peter did fall away, cursing and swearing. He never knew Jesus three times. But Jesus is telling Peter, when you come back from the tremendous fall to strengthen thy brethren, yes, you can fall away without losing your salvation. This means you never will need to be born a second time of God's Spirit. For Jesus only needed to make a perfect sacrifice once for our sins, which is for the past, the present, and the future. 
Hebrews 7, 25, wherefore? He is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Well, if they can fall away and can't get saved again, why is he making intercession? What's the purpose of that? In the terrible man's doctrine, they teach things that are not in the Bible at all, that you can lose your salvation. You cannot lose your salvation. That is why it is impossible to be saved again. Because you can't lose it. Hebrews 7, 26. For such a high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. But the word of the oath which was sent to law maketh the Son who is consecrated forevermore. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place. And that created what for us? Eternal. You see that? He entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption. Eternal. He did it once and it got us eternal redemption. You can never lose your salvation once you're saved. God's spirit and his seed is incorruptible. For Christ has not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as a high priest enter into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then he must have suffered since the foundation of the world. He would have had to suffer every time we sin. But now what? What? In the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ once, again once, offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him till he appear a second time without sin, unto salvation by the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all once for all once Jesus died once for us once because we only needed it once to re receive eternal redemption once we get a spirit of God see that is incorruptible. <laughs> oh, can't be corrupted. Sin is not imputed when there's no law because we're now under faith. And every high priest standeth daily ministering, offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man after he had offered one sacrifice, one, for sins forever. Is the Bible full of scripture that states we're saved once, eternally, forever? 
filled with scripture. There's not one scripture that says when you sin, you lose your salvation. Not one. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering, one, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also the witness to us, for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Past, present, and future. Once he died. Once. We receive eternal redemption. Because he died once. We don't need to be saved, to be saved, and to be saved. We're saved once. And we go forward. Not again laying the foundation and the foundation and the foundation. We get saved once. Go forward. Now where remission of sins there is, there is no more offering for sin. Isn't that what the scripture says? Why do people keep saying that you, you can lose your salvation? where he has to make more offering for sin. He does it. It's done. It's over. He's made it once for us and those who accept Jesus Christ has eternal redemption. Mr. Graham has said, Christian conversion is a transformation which we experience when we are born of God. Since one is not born over and over again, we must think of a Christian development in two phases, birth and growth. A child, for example, is born once. True, he falls down many times, but when he falls, he doesn't need to be born again. His falls, his bumps and bruises are all part of growing. So it is in the Christian life. Birth is sudden, once and for all, but development is a work of an entire lifetime. We can be converted in a moment, the precise moment that we accept Christ, but it takes a lot of prayer, Bible reading, church going, Christian service, to make a mature Christian. Once saved, always saved. 